What do you advise about remote caregiving? You know, many of us don't live in the same town or even the same state as uh, our parents or our siblings who need care. So how can we contribute to their care uh, while remaining where we are? Yes, this is a question on top of mind for many, many caregivers. Millions of caregivers are long distance. And as I mentioned, some may have lived nearby, but they, in these conditions, they can't go to the facilities or they can't go visit their loved ones. They're trying to stay separate. So when you are remote caregiving, I think, first of all, you need to communicate with if your loved ones are living in a nursing home, an assisted living, or a group home, or a, even an independent living facility, you want to communicate with the administration and you need to ask what safety precautions are being taken. Um, do the staff have personal protective equipment that they need? It does, is there anyone been diagnosed with COVID in that facility? Uh, are they um, keeping the, the love, your loved ones active? You know, are, are, is the activity staff and the social work staff still working? Are they having any kind of even one-on-one -on -one interactions? Um, if they are, have a roommate, how are they being kept safe, you know, from each other as well? And just really keep that communication open with the facility and really insist upon it that you should be getting regular communication, giving you updates, understanding what's happening, where they are living. You can also ask about ways that you can communicate with them. So if, uh, you know, Trudy had a, a great example where someone had an iPad for her mother to use. And many facilities I'm hearing are purchasing large numbers of these iPads or other tablets or using their personal phones so that residents can communicate with loved ones at a distance. You can ask if you could send a device. If, uh, if you set it up for them and then put it in the mail or deliver it to the facility somehow, ask what the rules are around that and if they would be able to use it and then how it would be secure in the, in the facility while they're not using it. Um, think about ways like that that you can communicate and take full advantage of the mail and sending cards and letters and stories and books or whatever it is that you can send for, to let them know that you are being, you know, you're, you're on it. You're, you're thinking of them. You're connected with them. Use your telephone. Um, I know many caregivers have people that are not able to talk on the phone very well, and that's really hard. But some will do video chats anyway with a staff's assistance because it's helpful to just see them with their own eyes and see how they're doing. It also gives you better feedback on how someone is doing at a distance. If they're living in their own home, then you need to help them figure out how to get groceries and personal supplies, help them do an inventory in of, of the supplies that they have, uh, help them order online and for delivery if they need to. Some caregivers will shop for their loved ones and drop them off at their home. Uh, and, and so you need to think about the day to day um, and, and the, the isolation. So keeping them active, keeping them socializing in any way that you possibly can. Um, I just wanted to suggest where my mom lives in an, it's the different levels of care in a retirement complex. Mm -hmm. They have a wonderful newsletter that the family members are able to uh, subscribe to. And that supplies a lot of day to day information. For example, they were testing some of their staff and some of their residents, and they keep us up to date on the testing and all of the precautions that are going on and changes in visitation, mail delivery, if you want flowers delivered, all that kind of thing. And also a direct line to the executive director of the, um, of the complex, which is really helpful because I think families hopefully have the hard discussions before somebody gets to an age where they're not able to maybe make all of their own decisions as far as end of life decisions and um, who should be the point person with the care facility, who's going to oversee uh, medications, legal documents, the power of attorney, all of those things that really need to be discussed. And, you know, I should have that done at this point in my life. And I, need to keep updating that. Uh, so those hard discussions like who's going to be in charge of the finances are things that hopefully um, families can discuss before it's um, beyond the point that they should have discussed it earlier. So um, I just really suggest being in contact with one another uh, in your family, your siblings or other relatives, 
and make sure that everybody's on the same page as far as how these decisions are going to proceed.